Well, good evening, church family, and those of you from our community or wherever you may be joining us from tonight. We're thrilled to have you join us for this time we call Midweek Manor, a chance to pause in the middle of the week and reflect on God's Word together. Uh, we certainly appreciate you taking a moment to do that with us tonight. We hope and trust your week is going well to this point. Uh, you are like me and many of us, I know, been a busy week, so it's great to take a few moments to pause and, and reflect on uh, the Word of God. I know at this point it's warming up some over the week this past weekend and even Monday and Tuesday morning. It was certainly not spring-like weather as we celebrated the first official day of spring, at least on the calendar this past Monday in our, in our Midweek Manna video last week. For those of you that were able to join us for that, we talked about the changing weather. And here I am again in recording in a, in a sweatshirt of sorts that reminds us and shows us just how cold this weather is. But the reality is that this past Monday did indeed mark the beginning of spring. And spring is a time of year that I know is a favorite time of year for, for many people. Uh, I know for those that live in areas where they have true four seasons, that they have a true fall, winter, spring, and summer, that they are thankful, many of them, to get out of the winter and to thaw out from winter storms and winter weather. And it's time of the year that you think, when you think of spring, you think of planting gardens, you think of flowers. Of course, around our area, we've had flowers blooming and lots of pollen already uh, that we've been dealing with. But it's still a time you think about as, as a sports fan. I always think about the Masters golf tournament just a couple of weeks. And part of what makes that tournament so special really is not just the golf itself, but the setting and the course. And I've been blessed enough a couple of times to go see that course in person. And it TV truly doesn't do it justice. The beauty of the azaleas and the beauty of the grounds and even the trees, all of that is just such a beautiful setting. And Spring makes all those things, of course, come to life. And that's why it is indeed so much of a beautiful setting, a beautiful, or I should say, a favorite season for so many. So many. And even, even the term, the time change that we had a couple of weeks ago, we refer to it as spring forward as we set our clocks ahead an hour. But just that phrase, spring forward, even brings about the thought and the idea of, of moving forward, of moving ahead, of moving past the winter season. And you know, we talk from time to time about how the seasons of the year kind of symbolize in some ways seasons of life. And the reality is we all go through different seasons of life, our, our good moments, maybe our summer moments, our not so good moments, our rough moments, kind of the winter moments, and we can talk about the fall and the spring in between, but when we go through those winter periods in our life, the dark times in our life, it's, we are thankful we're able to spring forward from those, to get, to get past those, if you will. In this time of the year, this change of seasons, a reminder of Sometimes the necessity of doing that, uh, but also the thankfulness of knowing that's coming. Uh, sometimes just even seeing a flower bloom or a garden grow is a reminder of those things and helps encourage us and gives us things positive to think about. In Isaiah chapter 43, Isaiah, of course, is a great book of prophecy. There's some who referred to Isaiah as the fifth gospel was in that there's so much prophecy of course about the Messiah and about Jesus and we understand that and read through that in many different sections but a lot of Isaiah also is talking about a, a prophecy of the Israelites the Jews and, uh, and Judah really returning out of Babylonian captivity and and how God has both punished them but also still remembers them and is going to bring them forward and bring them back really and really will bless them again. And we see some of that in Isaiah chapter 43, and just to read really a, a few verses from it to give us a little context. Starting in verse 16, Isaiah writes and says, Thus says the Lord, who makes a way in the sea, a path in the mighty waters, who brings forth chariot and horse, army and warrior. They lie down. They cannot rise. They are extinguished quench like a wick. 
And then he says this, verse 18, Remember the night the former things, and I consider the things of old. Behold, verse 19, and I am doing a new thing. Now it springs forth. Do you not perceive it? I will make a way, I will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. The wild beasts will honor me, the jackals and ostriches, for I give water in the wilderness, rivers in the desert, to, my, to give drink to my chosen people, the people whom I formed for myself, that they might declare my praise. There's wonderful imagery that is used here from God and from Isaiah to try to describe what God is, is doing. And that there are things that are going to spring forth. There's going to be water in the wilderness. There's going to be rivers in the desert. And those desert animals can be thankful for and look forward to. But it really is not necessarily much a literal, a literal aspect as much as it is a symbolic aspect of what he's doing for his people, the Jews. And providing water for them as they've been thirsting and thirst in the Babylonian captivity. But in that he says, in verse 18, if you notice, he says, Remember not the things of old. Remember not the former things. You know, the past is, is funny. We all can remember the past, help us learn from the past. Sometimes we hang on to the past too long and we feel like our best days are in the past. Like, a lot of people say the best years of their life are their years in college, and I understand that. There's certainly wonderful years of mine and my memories as well. Many great friendships were formed and remain to this day. And much freedom and all the things we can talk about from those college years. But sometimes people hang on to those so much, they wish they could get back to that, and they talk about how things were back in the day, and so we hang on to the past too much. And there's a delicate balance there. And for some people, there's past still a time of, of grieving. We've lost loved ones or maybe had years of re reminders and, and remembering. Think about the fact that three years ago this month, this, about this time, we were dealing with COVID and hearing about COVID for the first time and so many people that became sick and so many people that lost loved ones. And so this time of the year becomes a reminder of those things we don't ever need, want to make people feel guilty about going through the grieving. But there is a point where God is saying here, and I think biblically says in other places, that there is a point in time that we do have to let go to of the past, that we have to press forward, that we do put one foot in front of the other. We look at taking one day at a time. We don't ever, ever forget the memories of the past. We don't ever forget the lessons that are learned and sometimes even for us, that means we have to forgive ourselves for things we've done in the past. And as God brings the spring season in, he tells the Israelites here that he is doing new things, that he's springing forth. He's going forward. And spring season, it's in the beginning of spring season, I believe is a good reminder for all of us that sometimes maybe we need to do that. Of looking at things and things perhaps we've been dealing with in the winter doldrums of our life and now it's time to spring forward paul says this of course a very familiar passage in philippians chapter 3 which says starting starting with verse 12 not that i have already obtained this or am already perfect but i press on to make it my own because christ jesus has made me his own Brothers, I do not consider that I have made it my own, but one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead, I press on toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. And a lot of times we stop there, but in this passage he goes on to say this, let those of us who are mature think this way, and if anything you think, if and if in anything you think otherwise, God will reveal that also to you. He goes on to say, only let us hold true to what we have obtained. I think Paul is in part is saying there, a mark of spiritual maturity is that mark of learning to forgetting what lies behind, pressing forward to what lies ahead. 
Knowing it's not perfection that's most important, though we strive to be perfect, that it is direction. And as we do come to this new season, it's just a great reminder for us that for some, maybe it is time to set things behind. Begins what it, forgetting what's behind in Paul's words and straining forward to what's ahead. Let the newness of this season remind us that every day that God gives us is a new day. One that we can be thankful for, one that we have great blessings in and the way he blesses us. And one in which, no matter what happened yesterday, no matter what happened last month, no matter what happened last year, or even the last three years, we can spring forward. But our focus being on serving God and Jesus, focus being pressing forward to the prize and the goal for the prize of which God through Christ Jesus has called us. Well, I hope we are able to all enjoy this spring season. It's just great reminders for us as we see the change in the seasons and the change in the weather. And I know many of us, or many of you, may be hoping for the temperatures to begin and, and continue to warm up to represent spring. And hopefully that's a symbolic way for all of us in our lives, of our lives warming up, if you will, as well. Again, thank you for joining us tonight. Uh, we're certainly thankful for you to have and take a few moments to be with us. We hope you have a blessed rest of the week. For those in our church family, we always are thankful to be together. For those that may be guests at College Dale, if you joined us before, we certainly thankful to have you join us again. And we'd love to hear from you, love to connect with you. You can send us an email or follow us on, uh, or, or send us a message through Facebook and or follow us on Facebook or Instagram or simply call our church office number of ways to connect with us. We'd certainly love to hear from you. And even if you're a first time guest, we'd love to connect with you as well. For all of you, we remind you and encourage you to join us for a time together this Sunday. We have Bible classes at 9 a.m. at our, our church building, classes for all ages. And then we do an assemble here in the auditorium for worship at 10 a.m. And if you're unable to join us in person, we do live stream our, live stream our, our worship through our YouTube page, also at 10 a.m. And of course, we, if not able to join us in person, we'd love for you to join us that way as well. Again, I hope you have a blessed rest of the week. And let's close our thoughts tonight in prayer. Father, we do thank you for the change of seasons and the, it, it does remind us as we see it on the calendar, even if we don't feel it outside, it's a reminder to us of you being the creator of you creating everything. And as scripture tells us, really, as long as there's day and night, there will be a fall and winter and spring and summer. And all of that reminds us of uh, just the beauty of your creation. Father, it's also a reminder to us just in, in, a, in a symbolic way of our lives and the different seasons, different stages of life we deal with and go through. And for those who maybe have been dealing with the period of winter in their lives that we know for some it's still a, a, a time of grief, a time of heartache you're dealing with, they're dealing with, and we're mindful of those and ask you to wrap your arms around them. But for those who are able to get a, be at a point of really putting the winter times in the past and the spring forward and to the spring, a new spring season, we pray that you give them strength and sometimes courage to be able to do that. Father, we know there are a number of people that, as I mentioned a moment ago, are dealing with loss of loved ones or going through recoveries from surgery or going through treatments for cancer or so many different things that are going on we, in, just in our church family alone and those that we know well. We lift all of them to you and ask you to wrap your arms around them. For all the situations going on around us in our country and the world, we, as always, lift those to you. We mindful or mindful of the situation in Ukraine, among other places, and uh, we just ask for hearts and minds to be softened in a way for peace to come there soon. And Father, as always, we pray that you allow the leaders of our community and our state and our country and in in our world to have their hearts and minds open in a way that they will make decisions that will allow us as your people to live the kind of lives you desire us to live and have opportunities to share with others good news about your son, Jesus. 
We pray all this in your son's name. Amen.